Utah, it's Lobo basketball on you. And we are underway. Tip is controlled by BYU. Lobo starting out in a 2-3 zone. Ruffner baseline, hits the little pull-up. Little surprised to see that zone. Well, New Mexico generally known for man-to-man, -man, but these two coaches, I think they're going to use a lot of tricks tonight trying to keep the other team off balance. Spider Smith drives the baseline, cut off there, Gibson now, Shortstein inside, Gibson has some room, and he gets it to go. Man, <laughs> Roberts was all over that one. I don't know how he snuck it by there. We're tied at two all. Your turnover by Whitehead. And now the Lobos go back to man man. Some confusion. Whitehour takes the jump shot. I think maybe half the team went to man to man, Mike, and, and half stayed in the zone. Whitehour was left wide open. No one on him. It's 4-2 BYU. Stay ready. Stay ready. Well, was down low. Jump hook from the baseline. Not the roll that time. Tough angle to hit that jump hook. That's what I was going to say. You're going to steal my line. Out of bounds. And that will be off Campbell. I thought Shorty stuck his arm out, but he must have pulled it back in time. You notice Kenny, he caught that one about 12 feet from the bucket. A while ago, he was about 22 feet away from the ball. They're pulling him out. Charles Spider Smith, corner, Shornstein, thought about it. And the pass is kicked. And they'll reset it. New Mexico will get a fresh shot clock. Now Lobos dodged a bullet there because uh, Roberts was cutting down in front of Thomas. Just couldn't get his hands there. There's a look at Kenny Thomas, the freshman from Albuquerque High School. Via El Paso in Atlanta, Georgia. He's a brave save. We won't hold that against him. <laughs> Don't tell me he's a Cowboy fan, too. Smith again. He's double teamed down low. Difficult angle, and the spider gets it down. Smith with two points. The Lobos have tied it at four all as we go back the other way in the foul. That's one of the things BYU is very good at, and they're always good at it. They can even fast break against you out of the net. You know, you shouldn't let that happen to you, but there you see the Lobos scoring. They push it up, and Ruffner draws a foul. Here we'll go to the line and look at the replay. Let me uh, tell you what you just saw as far as the officials. Frank Bassoni, Bill Kennedy, and Milt Stone. Ruffner. The first Utah schools always shoot extremely well from the free throw line. No one's doing it better than Utah right now, but BYU not that far behind at 75% as a team. It's like cold weather. There's nothing else to do. So just go to go to the gym and shoot free throws. Ruffner with four points, and BYU has the lead, 6-4. Smith wanted the ball, has to go his way now. He'll try the three-pointer. He felt it earlier, and he feels it again. And New Mexico has its first lead, 7-6, Spider with five points. Neither one of these teams playing much defense so far. That goes out of bounds. That has been a BYU trademark, playing a good strapping defense historically. Reed in the corner, Roberts puts that one up, offensive rebound, Whiteout can't get it, Campbell keeps it alive, and those offensive boards hurt New Mexico the last time they met. Gibson, contact made, Spider Smith will bring it back out. That was a good no call by the official that time. Dornstein has it, misses the bunny, tries it again, in and out for Thomas, and Kenny Thomas has it. We're going to have a travel on Thomas. Didn't see him move his feet. The official did. The Lobos were all over this one. There's a dribble. And I think he did change his the pivot foot. I thought big men could do that. But they were allowed. In NBA rules or college rules? I think if you're 6'9 or taller, you the guard rules don't apply to you when you're outside. Campbell working against Thomas. Off the glass of the car, that's out of bounds. And the problem.
problem that the Lobos have faced on the road has not occurred so far tonight, and that is starting off very slow or very cold. Happened to Colorado State, Wyoming, and UTEP. They've avoided it so far tonight. Charles Smith really seems ready to play. Shorenstein, who takes, going to have a whistle and a hold on Randy Reed, the coach's son. Reed's talking that he was pushed on, and actually, he may have a small point. That was right in front of us, and it looked like Shorty did use the forearm a little bit. I would say it's a big point, and the point of his elbow right in the chest. Now we're going to have a call on Gibson, pushing over Reed. David Gibson picks up his first foul. And that's what Lobo fans hate about Randy Reed, that kind of play. Coaches love it when you have a kid like that on your team, but it was uh, more of an acting job than anything, I think. Randy Reed coming off, I thought, his best game ever against New Mexico. 17 points, quite a few assists. Inside, Lefter has it blocked, will have a foul. And let's see if it's on Thomas or Shields, and it is on Kenny Thomas's first. Well, I mean, whenever you have a guy like Kenny who's going to get in foul trouble, your guards have to help him out, and that was just poor defense letting Ruffner, he curls through the middle there, Spiders trailing him the whole way, and uh, they're going to get, I don't know whether Kenny was the one that actually fouled him, but uh, whenever you're in the middle in the paint like that with bodies, they're going to call fouls. Ruffner shoots 75% at the line. Originally went to Utah State, spent two years there. Actually had a medical hardship for his second year. Transferred to Utah Valley State right near Provo here. And he ended up at BYU. Was the Big West freshman of the year. All the way out to Shorenstein. Alley-oop inside. Good hands by Thomas. He has it blocked, but we'll, he'll go to the line after the whistle. You know, following up on Ruffner, uh, he was uh, BYU's leading rebounder in the pit. Not only can he score, but he's a very good rebounding guard. And there you're seeing getting up in the air and blo uh, blocking Kenny's shot. Uh, was on Wydauer. And Kenny Thomas hits the first. That's his first point of the night. Point to note about Kenny Thomas at the free throw line. When he misses, he has a tendency to be leaning back. Is that correct, Nelson? Yeah. And the BYU Cougars with the roll. Wide out with the hoop and we're tied at nine. That's exactly right. One of his major problems is he starts getting back the other towards defense a little early. Gibson puts that one off the rim. Big offensive rebound by Schornstein. And he is fouled. That's a good job of Shorty of going to the glass. BYU, they were all gathered around Kenny Thomas to box him out, and it was wide open. He snuck through. 15.41 to go, and we're tied at 9 all. We'll be right back. Uh, New Mexico and BYU tied at 9 all, and we want to wish uh, Kavasi Franklin the best of luck. Kavasi will undergo surgery tomorrow on a broken bone in his foot. And I'll have a pin in place in that, and he's expected to be out four to six weeks. Could be done for the season, and uh, his absence really hurts New Mexico. Yes, he does. We see the Lobos going to their bench right now. Marty Cotwright, Royce Alney both checking in, but uh, they are going to miss Cavassi. He was kind of coming into his, his own. Thomas and Cotwright on the floor at the same, uh, same time. Oh, great screen, and the miss dunk by Thomas out of bounds. Boy, that's an inbound play that Dave Bliss hates to see wasted because that was set up beautifully. Nice screen and roll. Kenny came out, set the screen, rolled to the hole, and was wide open. Kenneth Roberts got a hand on the ball, I believe, from the backside, and, and that may have been what caused the miss. Still tied at nine. Read off the screen in the paint. Roberts now. That's in and out, and Thomas gets the rebound. White Shields, who has yet to get on track. Gibson left alone, drives in and lays it in, yes! Four points for Gibson. Nice drive that time by David Gibson. You no, know, and in the BYU game, uh, David really kind of grew up as a player because he started taking it really strong to the hole, just like he did then. 
He had 12 points against BYU. All of the baskets, ooh, he hit right in the face. All of the baskets were on drives just like that. Free throw too strong, but Cartwright gets the rebound. Marty, the senior from L.A., and Royce in and out. And his streak is now over his last 18 if that was a three point. Addition side. Tied at 11 off. Better looking shots by Royce, or how has his shot looked during this slump? You know what? Most of his shots have been pretty good looking shots, and that was a very good shot. That's as good as it can get without going in. Shields knocks it down for three. Clayton Shields with his first bucket. You know, in the Utah game, that broke a streak for Clayton. He didn't even get a three-point shot off in that game, much less make one. Roberts again, top right guarding him. Campbell left the long, and he dumps it. Well, Kenny, he took his eyes off of his man, and that's something you do not do, and it's hard to know where they are. He got turned around in the corner. Well, the lead is now one, 14 to the top. regarding Holby. Shields the leaner, and that'll be a little bit short. Get back. Reed will push it up. And we'll have a blocking foul, no basket, the blocking foul on Gibson. And that'll be number two on David Gibson. See, there's Kenny turned around. Nothing he can do from that point. And Campbell does not return the favor and miss the dunk. Reed is so good at that. He gets inside and he dips his shoulder just enough to draw the contact. And even if they don't call the foul, it bumps the defender back so they can't block his shot. 13.56 to go. White hour on the bench now. A substitution for New Mexico. David Gibson will sit. And Charles Smith in for him. So Alney will run the point. And Shornstein checks in after a couple of pretty good minutes from Marty Cotright. Marty got a big offensive rebound, but then he was slow getting back. Gave up the easy bucket. And Reed hits the second one as well. And BYU leads it by one. All the way out to Shields. BYU really helping off on the inside on Kenny Thomas. Well, with David out, they've got more shooters in the game. Only dishes to Shornstein, reverses, and is fouled. I think that's going to be on Ruffner, and if it is, Mike, that's his second foul. Nice dish by Royce. Now, in a situation like that, and it is on Ruffner, why doesn't Greg just go up strong with the left hand or on that side of the bucket instead of trying, trying to swirl that right around? Well, I, I should ask no Greg. <laughs> sure he had a reason. First one no good by Shornstein, who has really played well the past uh, couple of weeks of the season. Gets his second free throw to go. And we're tied at 15 off. Nathan Cooper with the round to rough to Reed in the corner. And New Mexico's gone to his own again. Ruffner way outside. Arching three-pointer. Eight points now for Ruffner. Well, we talked about it in the pregame show that he can light it up and light it up quick, and that's what he's doing tonight. Cooper, there's only He's never going to get a better look than that, and he trades it. Nice job, Royce. It's a two-pointer. New Mexico down by one. Ruffner fakes. Shields went high in the air and manages to get the rebound. And the pass by Olney uh, would have been too long, and he blames himself. And another substitute come in, Christensen for BYU. And that's frustrating, because even if the pass is right on the money, what's Kenny Thomas going to do with it? He's 12 feet away on the baseline. That's not advancing your offense. Here's a look at Todd Christensen, Salt Lake City Highland High School. His dad played here, and uh, he's had brothers, uh, Craig and Kurt, also play here. Ruffner's dad, he played here, too. He did. He's sitting a couple uh, seats away from us. Former All-American here. Now they're uh, color analysts for 20 years. Good defense by Charles Smith on Reed. Shot clock down to seven. It's Christensen. Somehow he got in the lane. He misses it. Boy, 
Lewis watching from behind. Gives it to Shornstein baseline. We'll have a chance. Greg Shornstein with the charge, his first foul. Out of control that time. Here you'll see. Set. Now, that was one of those calls that you usually don't get. Probably should have been a no call because Shorty didn't hit him square in the chest, but he was set. Should be Daniel Santiago from Albuquerque. From Morty High School just coming in, and Kenny Thomas will take a break. Spider Smith thought about the steal there. Einstein yelling at Roberts, who goes around him, and he's fouled hard. And Roberts will shoot too. Let's see who this is on. Is it on? Uh-oh, uh they're going to call it on Shorty. Well, that's his second. Daniel uh, didn't get over there in time for him to get the foul. There you see, got all ball, and then both of them hammered him hard. Good call. Roberts to the line so far tonight. Kenneth Roberts with two points. And another player who uh, has relatives who played here. Fred Roberts, you talked about, uh, mentioned his name earlier. Played in the NBA. I don't even know, is he still playing in the NBA? He's been... Uh, managed to make uh, a long career for himself in the National Basketball Association. As Kenneth hits the second one, extending that BYU lead, timeout on the floor. It's the Cougars up now, 2017. Colorado Rockies play ball live on UPN 50. First televised game is Monday, April 8th. The Rockies meet the Chicago Cubs at Coors Field. The afternoon game begins at 1. Hardly wait for that. The Rockies right here on UPN 50. And it's the Lobos trailing BYU 2017. 11.34 to go in the first half. Makes you winning the boards, though, 10-5. to 5. Shields in the lane, gives it off to Kenny Thomas, who gets it back. Charles Smith all alone, yes, three-pointer, and we're tied at 20. Right now, two of the three R's are on the bench. Ruffner and Roberts are on the bench for BYU. Charles Smith with eight points, almost had 10. Was doing a good job defensively uh, so far on this possession. Reed off the screen, fakes. Tip up is good, and I'm not sure who they'll give credit to. I think it's Cooper. I think it is Cooper. He had 10 points in the second half against New Mexico in the pit, and BYU back up. Smith will step up at the free throw line, and he is fouled and will shoot too. The main focal point of this Lobo offense has become getting it inside to Kenny Thomas, but it's been hard to do that tonight. Yeah, but you've seen, I mean, the Lobos, you know, because of that and because they're being patient, boy, they're getting some really good shots. I mean, the Lobos, uh, I think, are shooting right at 50%. They're 7 of 14 uh, tonight. That's a very good percentage. Uh, four, four turnovers, but uh, if they can do that and make the other team you know, change their defense to guard Kenny, get some good shots. The last foul is on Yarko Abbaum. He's from Finland, a sophomore. And Charles Smith in double figures already with 10. 22 apiece. Ten and a half minutes to go in the first half. Mike Powers and Nelson France with you right here on UPN 50. Glad you could be with us tonight. What's the comparison between my bus driver and your main man? I've got ten points. What do you think? Yeah, we're uh, right in that same vicinity. I'll have to double check that. As Campbell throws it inside. Thomas with the big rebound. And almost throws it away. Spider Smith drives in. And can't get the layup to go. And it's tipped out of bounds, and that hit a New Mexico player as Roberts checks back in. As for Ruffner, he has eight points. They answered the question there. Are you saying that you have the early edge on who picked the better player tonight? Roberts off the inbounds pass gets the hometown roll there. That's what I was wanting to say, yeah. Four points for Kenneth Roberts. 
Hey, Charles Smith really looks confident out there. Let's see if Clayton Shields can hit the three-pointer, and he does. Clayton's starting to play extremely well. Six points on a pair of trays. Once again, Kenny, screen and roll to Spider. Kick it to Kenny. He's open. They go to him. Wide open, Clayton Shields. Mexico up by one. His little baseline jump was no good. Roberts tips it up in the end. And can there be such a thing as too much help from the inside? Whenever Shorty's out, they have a hard time keeping Roberts off the glass. That doesn't answer your question. <laughs> Oops, inside. Thomas misses. He'll try it again, and he'll get it, and he's fouled. He can be relentless inside. Let's go back to the other end, and what I was referring to was the help. See how many Lobos come over. It's just the two. There you see. Kenny's going to get the first one. Block, but that's fine. That's fine. Little Shack of the Whack puts in the second one. I like saying that. Shack of the Whack. Sometimes you're so clever. And he gets the free throw to go. Kenny Thomas with five. Lobo's got a big two-point lead now. <laughs> Christensen in the paint. It's wide hour with it. Step back and he'll shoot it. That's Justin Wideauer, 6'7, 200 pound sophomore. And he's up there with six points now. Help, help, Randy! Good move by Smith. That's going to be a tough shot, though. He got a little body as he went down the baseline. BYU looks to regain the lead. Like a travel there. Have a foul on Kenny Thomas. Roberts will shoot two. Kenny just picked up his second foul. Should have been his third because he threw uh, Reed out of the lane the other end of the court. Did you see him flying I out of there? I didn't see that, no. Don't foul the jump shooter. Don't do it. Now let's set the lineup for New Mexico now. Shields in along with Shornstein. Olney, Gibson, and Thomas will now sit down with Daniel Santiago. Well, it's tough whenever you're coming off the bench. You have to be ready to play, uh, go in. The game can be on the line, all kinds of different situations. And uh, this short bench for the Lobos, they have to come in and give them quality minutes. And Roberts misses his first free throw of the night. 80% on the season. At one point, he hit 21 in a row. And Roberts gets the second one, and he has seven. Well, let's see what kind of minutes Dave Liss can get out of Daniel Santiago. Royce will bring it back out. White hour on him, at least momentarily now. There's a mismatch on the far side. The Lobos had an overload, but BYU, a man short. Now everybody adjusts. Shot clock down to eight. Corner only. Royce hits it. That's a three-pointer, and the streak is now history. Well, that's a new streak now. He's that's, got one in a row. There you go. And New Mexico leads 31-29. And his parents back in Hot Springs or TRC will be glad we can quit talking about that streak. Roberts with the offensive rebound, and somehow he gets it in. Well, uh, Daniel just didn't box out. He had good position. It's only corner, Shornstein. Trying to give it to Santiago. Roberts fronting him. 7.13 to go in the half. Shot clock down to 12. Good dish and the finish. It wasn't spectacular, but the ball went through for Santiago. Less spectacular than uh, Kenny's missed dunk, but uh, two points versus none. More effective, that's for sure. Blows up two. Ruffner good position inside. Ruffner stands at 6'6". Royce only is about 6'2", so that is a problem defensively for New Mexico. And Shields is fouled as he went to the hole. And uh, 
uh, he will go to the line and shoot one and one now. Here you'll see nice post-up shot by Brian Ruffner. Royce went for the steal because he knew if he didn't, that was his only hope. Here's Roger Reed in his seventh season at BYU. A couple of WAC championships to his credit. 147 wins, 65 losses here. The first of the bonus is no good, and Jermaine Thompson in there helping with the rebound. 33-33. Again, they try to get it inside. This time, Oldie comes up with the steal. Shornstein loses it, and he looks like he hurt his knee. He's up slowly as we go back the other end. Ruffner, the arching shot, too strong. And Royce only saved that sequence by tipping it out of bounds. And hopefully, Greg Shornstein is okay. Trying to uh, work it off. We're going to have a timeout on the floor with the score 33-33. The Lazarus Man starring Robert Urick set in the post-Civil War West. The Lazarus Man is on a quest to find his own identity. An action adventure taking place through New Mexico territory. The Lazarus Man shot on location in Santa Fe. Air Saturday night following the Lobo Utah game. Here at the Marriott Center, BYU 33, New Mexico 33. Both teams shooting a blazing 52%. Mexico in his own right now. Ruffner drives baseline, cut off by Cotwright. Reed for the three, and BYU is now two and three from three-point range. Five points for Randy Reed. BYU's also caught up on the rebound category. It's now a dozen each. Come on, two. Charles Smith tries to answer right back. Can he get the roll? No. Reed pushes it, loses it. It looked like it went off his knee, but they'll say no. Well, Reed does a good job of pushing it up. He also runs New Mexico's guards off the big man. They're not watching. All the way out. Randy's brother, Robbie, on a mission this year. Ruffner off the front of the rim and a nice rebound by Charles Smith. Ray, uh, Robbie Reed, as I mentioned, on that mission. He will return, not next season, but the season after. Lobos trail it by three. Less than five minutes to go in the half. Shornstein inside, and he is fouled. That'll be on Reed. That's his second foul. Nice pass by Clayton, right on a rope. There you see, right on the arm. Thompson will take a break, and Roberts replaces him. Roberts, an all WAC member last year from Riverton, Utah. He's a senior, 24 years old. Freshman year, he played against Luke Longley. So he goes back a few years. First free throw is good for Shornstein. In the past seven games, Shornstein has averaged 10 points, 57% field goal shooting, and nine of eight, uh, nine of 18 on three pointers. It's the second one a little bit too hard. His big game was against Colorado State on the road, 22 points, and was uh, the no doubt about it hero in that game. Why you buy two? Campbell in there Walking. looked like he walked. Oh. Instead, they'll say a push on Cotwright. Well, that was just a situation of uh, the referee with the worst angle for the walk uh, made the call. And that happens. That's one of the things you know with the three refs out there. There you see the feet there, the little shuffling of the feet. 18 fouls on New Mexico, so Campbell will shoot the one and one and gets the first. A lot of fouls would probably favor BYU because they're a better free throw shooting team. And they go a little bit deeper, although not nearly as deep as they had in the past where it was almost a problem for Coach Reed because he had so many guys on the bench. He lost a few players because of that. Right. Most need to stay close here, down by four. 
As we get closer to half. Smith slices in and a little hard, but he'll shoot too. One of the things right now with Ruffner guarding Smith, Ruffner's got two fouls, so Spider can be aggressive taking it at him. There you see Spider doing a good job. He gets into Roberts' body, and that's his second foul. First free throw good. 11 points for Charles Smith. The Thompson's checking in, and he had a big one minute in the pit. In one minute, he had a steal, two fouls, and a turnover, and a block, I think, and a sandwich. He, <laughs> it's very unusual for him to be in twice in the same half. He does not get that many minutes. Second free throw, no good. Shields almost had great position. Looks at the official as he comes back, shaking his head. 38-35. Was not shooting well at the line right now. Thompson against Cotwright. Blocked. Out of bounds. No, I thought it was out of bounds. Instead, BYU puts it back in. Wide out. Eight points for him. BYU did a good job of just staying with that one. Smith over to Shield. Clayton wants to drive, does, but he is held out front. And he will shoot two because BYU is uh, past the 10 foul limit. Maybe we can have a better idea about what happened the last time down there. Shields with the block. Boy, Shorty, there, he dodged a bullet that time. Uh, Free throw good by Clayton. Seven points. New Mexico definitely has the advantage in quickness, and the key is to take advantage of it in the right situations. Both free throws good. We'll have a timeout in the floor. 3.43 to go. The Lobos trail it by 3, 40, 37. America's Funniest Home Videos, five nights a week on UPN 50. Watch a full hour of America's Funniest Moments cut on video each weeknight at 6 only on UPN 50. We go back to live action now with BYU up by 3 over New Mexico. 3.30 to go first half. Campbell in the corner. All three of the R's for BYU have two fouls, Ruffner, Reed, and Roberts. Along with Wideauer. Shot clock down to 8. Looking for Thompson inside. Good position. Scores over Kenny Thomas. Well, Thomas, uh, one of three Lobos, along with Gibson and Schoenstein, with two fouls, and Kenny couldn't do anything but put his arms in. 42 BYU. To try to answer Thomas inside, and he'll go for two. Boy, people do not like to give Kenny Thomas any easy buckets. And that's his second, so we can add him to the list of the group with two fouls for the Cougars. Thompson is a senior. Newark, New Jersey, 6'8", 235. Free throw rims out. New Mexico now for the game, 10 of 16 at the free throw line. Second one is good, and that was an instance where Kenny started to back away right as he shot it. Thomas will sit, and Cotwright will replace him, so Marty getting the most minutes he's seen in the whack. Points in the paint, BYU with 18 tonight, Nelson, New Mexico with six. Goes baseline. I don't think Thompson, that's his shot. Off the screen, Reed is bumped and he scores. They'll count it. BYU now a six-point edge, their biggest lead of the game. There you see Clayton 
kind of no man's land there. You're not going to go out and contest the shot. There's no need to do what he did then. I'm not sure what he was doing. I'm not sure either. There's Ruffner on the bench for Shields, two fouls. As Reed completes the three-point play, the old-fashioned one, and BYU up by seven now. Kenny Thomas stays, comes back into the game. Pull-up jumper, Shields wedges inside the uh, glass and the rim. That's not a good shot. Whenever it ends up there, that, that's just not a good shot. Possession arrow to New Mexico. Uh, Funk. Uh, ever do that? I uh, know. Never. Only when you went up for a rebound once and then wedged it in there when you're trying to jam it. There you go. This is a big sequence now for New Mexico. The final couple of minutes here. We're going to have a hold inside on Thompson. So Kenny Thomas will shoot two. Let's see if Coach Bliss continues to platoon Cartwright and Thomas kind of offense defense. In the game now, Thomas with six. With all of the Lobos, uh, well, I'm not sure about that. I say all of the Lobos. Pitch. Second try. Is good. And the Lobos have been hitting about one of two lately at the free throw line. That's one of the places where why BYU has a six-point lead. BYU, they've been making, you know, 70, 75 percent of their free throws throughout the game. On the sits and caught right in for him, and the Lobos go back to the zone. Good defense by Royce that time, making Reed dribble very wide. Reed in and out. Caught right. Outlet, and here comes Spider Smith. Well done, well done. Nice job of driving the bus. 15 points now for Spider. Avoided, avoided the charge by gathering himself and then going straight up. Four point BYU lead. Three point miss by Reed was, was big. That was a big miss. Five point play in essence because the Lobos got the fast break the other way. Long range jump shot. Left wide open is Grant Burgess who just checked in, and he's a streaky shooter. Lobos throw it away. So BYU will get the ball back, 48-41. Here you see Spider, good hands. And watch him avoid the charge. Jumps up far enough away from the bucket so he can still glide in. And that's a big bucket right there by the new player off the bench. Burgess from Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. He's 6'8". He can hit that shot. All goes back to man. One minute to go in the half. Shot clock at 15. With all three R's, key players from PYU, Reed, Ruff, and Roberts are on the bench. Those need a stop right now. Shot clock down to five, and we'll have a travel. Best defensive series for New Mexico. Well, BYU easier to guard when you have their three aces on the bench. And again, Dave Bliss goes to that uh, platoon style uh, substitution with Kenny Thomas in on offense and caught right on the bench. Lobos need Kenny Thomas's offense. They just cannot afford for him to get that third foul. Mexico with six, BYU only three. Thomas wants it. Give and go. Back out to Smith. A little bit short. And Thomas will get it back. Lobos can play for the last shot, and they go. Well, that's, that's a freshman mistake that time. You should have been aware that if you get an offensive rebound immediately, that you're going to want to pull it out. Now BYU has a chance as Cotwright replaces Thomas again. BYU has a chance to take the last shot and extend the lead to nine or even ten. Twenty-three seconds to go in the half. Those have played rather well in this half. Well, the main problem is just their defense. I mean, BYU 
getting very good looks, and they're a good shooting team. Christensen driving in now. Pushes off a little bit against only. Tries it again. There's Cooper. Shot down to one. Puts it up. Yeah. So BYU will go into the locker room, leading by nine. Our score at the halftime break, it's Brigham Young University 50, New Mexico 41. We will be back to Provo, Utah in just a moment for our halftime report. Stay with us. No, it's not. They'll play good defense for maybe 10, 15, 20 seconds. Then there'll be a breakdown, someone not help out on the screen or something. And BYU, they're getting a good look every time down, and, and they're a good shooting team. With the foul trouble in New Mexico, number of players with two, is that a, a much of a concern right now? Well, it was the way Coach Bliss had to play him the first half. One, you had to take Kenny out quite a bit, and he really causes the Cougars some problems on defense. But the other one that we didn't talk about that much, and that's Greg Schornstein. He got two early fouls. He had to spend some time on the bench, and he's the guy that basically shut down Roberts in the pit. And David Gibson also with two fouls, and, and this may be the fewest minutes David Gibson has played in a half this season. Yeah, and David, you lose a little quickness uh, with him, and we've seen Reed be able to take it to the hole a few times that hope maybe he wouldn't have been able to do it, David, on it. Right, as many of you know, the Lobos are down to nine scholarship players right now available. Uh, Kavasi Franklin with that broken bone in his foot, having surgery tomorrow, and he was playing so well, so that's a key loss for the moments. Yeah, he was someone that could come in and provide you some instant energy. I mean, Kavasi might not hit the shots all the time, but he came in, play aggressive defense, and he was a good rebounding guard in New Mexico. They were uh, rebounding well to start the game, but uh, BYU kind of took that over the last eight, nine minutes. Well, you mentioned the, the defense for New Mexico. They've given up 50 points to BYU, which is the most they've given up in a half, uh, tying for the most with Arizona State. The good news is the Lobos came back to win that game. Yeah, and New Mexico, I mean, because they're shooting well, and I think they're executing their offense about as well as I've seen uh, in quite some time, missing some free throws down the stretch, and then that last play, the Lobos should have pulled it out and gone for the uh, last shot, cost them uh, at least two and maybe four points. Right. Okay. Well, we'll take a break right now. New Mexico trails BYU 50-41 to 41 at the half, and we'll be back with more of our halftime report in a moment. BYU, and they will play it in. Underway in the second half now from Provo. Lobo's in there trapping 1-3-1 one, one zone defense. Need to move, and they need to find someone out and box out. There's Ruffner, short jump shot from the baseline. Thomas grabs the rebound. He has eight for the game. All-time leading rebounder for a freshman at New Mexico. Stein set up for three. Nice rotation, but he cannot get it. The long rebound goes to BYU. The Lobos, they kind of over-rebounded on that one. They were all close to the rim, had good position. That one bounded out. Side Roberts, stolen away by Spider Smith. Spider, best on the team in that category, along with assists. it away and BYU throws it slow getting back and Campbell throws it away uh, that's two quick turnovers in the second half for BYU they're yet to get a shot well no I take it back Ruffner took the shot with Kenny Thomas on just underway in the second half Mike Powers and Nelson France with you on UPN 50 Thomas way out front. Someday the coaches hope he'll be able to take that shot. Good position by Thomas. Steps away back to Spider. Spinning inside. Misses it off the bottom of the rim. Thomas now one of six. And we're going to have a charge on Campbell. And for Campbell, that is his third. Oh, did you see Ruffner down there? What's Leading that? on Kenny Thomas? I'll tell you what, that's an interesting matchup. Good position by Clayton Shields. Good job of hustling go. back. Come on, getting 40, in. let's go, White. Was about the One slowest time, fast go. break. I can remember that whole play took forever to develop. We're still 50-41. Neither team has scored here in the second half. They have a whistle and a foul, and they're going to call it on Thomas with the block. 
third one on Kenny Thomas. That's one of those ones he, they do not want him to pick up. And that was, that's a pathetic call. I'm sorry. He was set. Uh, he's a big target out there, and guys are going to run into him hard. We're going to have one the other way now. That may be four on Campbell if that's who that's on. And then, you know, the moving screens like that, unless the guy's really moving, that's one of the ones they need to let the guys play, and that is Campbell's fourth foul. That's something people come to see these guys play, and unless someone is really moving like that on, on a screen, they shouldn't play. Shield sets up his second three-point try of the half. Both of them have rimmed off. Rustner down low. Rebound. Rebound Shornstein who tries to fight his way out of it. And Shornstein can't believe he was tied up. Hey, what his hair's even messed up on that one. <laughs> Possession arrow is to New Mexico. Campbell sits. Nathan Cooper from Provo replaces him. Boy, Reed does a good job, though. Whenever you bring the ball down low, he's going to be all over ball and or hands and arms. This is the best he's played, and I guess that uh, he should be. He's a senior. Playing a lot smart. Shortstein. Kenny Thomas off the window for two. His first basket in a long time, he has nine. Once again, not an easy look, though. Move! Lead is seven. Move, Justin! Come here! Give me that red! Come on, Justin! Wait! Wide hour. Back off! Ruffner down low, and he'll have a score. Well, he loves that. Yeah, he does. Twelve points now for Brian Ruffner. was getting a little frustrated. You can kind of sense that. Black block to 18. We're going to have a foul, and they'll count it. Reed moved his arms right in, and Charles Smith scored. And that's going to be three on Reed. Look at that. I really like him as a player. I mean, there he was guarding Kenny Thomas while ago on a, on a switch. He was banging Kenny. I mean, he says, bring him on. I like to compete. Guards like to uh, pretend they're centers every once in a while. Yeah, they're usually on offense. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Bliss, Bliss, eight seasons at New Mexico. Second most wins all time for a Lobo coach. And Smith completes the three-point play. 52-46, it's down to six, and Spider with 16 points. Cooper there, looks to go baseline, slides, and they're gonna call a foul on Shields. That was a very nonchalant call by the official. Look at he gets his arm out there. He clearly loses his balance, but that's one of those situations. A ref didn't want it to be just a, a turnover. It normally would have been a no call, but since he lost the ball, ref had to make the call. Well, that's the wrong call there. Gibson tips it out. Shields with three fouls. Now he remains in the game. And at this point, there really isn't anyone to bring in for him. We've got a lot of guys out there with three fouls. I mean, you got Reed out there with three fouls. Uh, I guess he's the only other one. <laughs> Never mind. It's Roberts. Turnaround jump shot baseline. But Shields with a high rebound. They'd love to see him do more of that. 52-46. To Gibson. Short. Something David needs to work on. Blocked. Thought it was off the window. Might have got away with one there. And the way these refs have been going, if they think that, there'll be a makeup call soon. Back to Shields. Try it again. Yes, this time Clayton gets it in the lead is three. 11 points for Shields, and that's his third three-pointer, and BYU wants a 20-second timeout. First half, I don't think either coach used their 20-second timeout. Extremely rare, extremely. Because if you don't use it, you lose it. 
but you know, so what? <laughs> well, what we ought to be able to do is take both those 20s and get in a 30 second commercial. Or get, using the 20 seconds lets the refs look at some of those calls they've made. And that's against, you know, both of these teams. You know, the refs, they're out there, they're not perfect, they're going to miss some, but it's just frustrating for the players out there whenever, you know, they trying to win a game and all of a sudden the whistles are taking over. Also in the WAC tonight, Wyoming at Air Force, an early score there, 10-3 Cowboys. Colorado State at Fresno State later. And New Mexico State is at home to Pacific in the early result there, 12-11 Pacific. It did look like it hit the glass first, probably should have been a goal here. Foul trouble, Thomas and Shields with three for the Lobos, Campbell with four for BYU. Both of them are in the game now, Thomas and Shields. Roberts against Cotwright. We're going to have a hold on Marty Cotwright. Number two on Cotwright. And we will have a media timeout at the 15.09 mark. BYU's lead was nine. It's now three. Only Alaska deal with everyday situations. As we come back to live action, it's out of bounds to New Mexico. Northern Exposure, five nights a week on UPN 50, tonight immediately following the game. That's as close as a ball can hang up there and lay around and not go in. Fulcher did uh, Clayton Shields jumper in the first half. Shields again. Marisoli thought about it and almost threw it away. That's a good matchup inside, Kenny Thomas and Kenneth Roberts. And you know, for the first time tonight, the fans are really getting into this game. It seems anyway. It is. It's the first time there's some people standing and cheering and uh, are a little sluggish to start with. But then, whenever BYU got a lead, there was no reason for them to cheer. If New Mexico fighting back, they're in it. Way out front, only off a high screen. Thomas with the offensive rebound, looks for help and gets it out to Shields. I like what Clayton did right there. Let's go back inside, at least look to Thomas. Shields looking for his fourth three-pointer, just a little shot. That would have tied it. Cooper left alone, that's too easy for him. It's tipped out and they'll say it's BYU's ball. Cooper was recruited by Stanford, Utah, Penn State, among others. Attendance tonight, 16,624. And Roberts, and again, it's a little bit of a late whistle. It might be the correct call, the push on Marty Cotwright. Well, I tell you what, I mean, it's just frustrating for players. I mean, they're out there battling. They know how to battle. Well, watch it here. The pass goes in. And how much contact do we have? See how late the whistle was? And there was no contact there. I mean, Marty, once he took his position, he didn't bump Roberts or do anything. Smith and Shornstein in for New Mexico now. And Oldie steals it right away. It's a three-on-one break. Gibson lays it in. Well done, Olney. It's a one-point BYU lead. It's good shortstop hands there. That's right. Dunk it out of the dirt. Inside. Wide hour all alone. And they're going to call Thomas with the push, his fourth. Number four on Kenny Thomas at the 13-36 mark. Let's see, I think that's going to be a good call. Well, there you see Kenny fighting through there. Wow, that's a big blow to the Lobos. Marty is in now, caught right. And he has three fouls. Stolen away, the Lobos look to take the lead. Gibson all the way, that oh, hand is a little short. Cotwright will muscle it in, and the Lobos have the lead. Nice job by Cotwright to hustle down. And BYU calls the timeout, 13-19 to go. The Lobos lead it by one. 
BYU two points since half. half. Yeah. Lobo Basketball on UPN 50 is brought to you by your New Mexico Dodge dealer. Two points here in the second half, and the Lobos have taken the lead. We're down to 48% shooting after shooting close to 56% in the first half. Lobos on a 10-0 run. Shornstein inside. And that's the let's see, sixth or seventh team foul on New Mexico. It's the sixth, and it's the third foul on Shorty. Lobos have their two walk-ons suited up tonight. I don't think Dave Liss was anticipating using them. Ruffner, free throw line and beyond. BYU regains the lead. Ruffner with 14. Very confident young man. Has a nice play they ran to get him wide open. Try to answer, Shorty. Shot clock down to 15. Down to nine. Usually Spider gets the ball in this circumstance. Not this time. Shornstein drives in and scores off the glass. Greg Shornstein with four, and the Lobos regain the lead. Alley oop, Roberts. You don't see that very often. And you don't want to get the ball in the cot right in that situation. At the free throw line again. And Spider Smith with the rebound. And we'll have a foul on BYU on Cooper. Jump stop right there. Goes up strong. Good looking shot. A couple of hands on the ball, but... Got him with a slap, I think, before that. Clayton Shields returns. Shields with three fouls on the floor. Caught right with three. Everyone on the floor right now for BYU has two, except Randy Reed with three. Right. Very patient. Spider Smith in the lane. And they'll call it on Roberts with the body. No, no, no. Correction, Ruffner. It'll be four on Ruffner. Or third. Well, it's three or four. I haven't got one of those right. Spider jumping into a crowd of people. And I'll tell you, Mike, tonight is the night to jump into a crowd of people. It is. Because uh, the refs are going to call a foul. I mean, you just need to jump in there, move the ball around a little bit, and uh, go to the free throw line. Okay. Smith for two. Knocks that one down. He's two for two from the foul line here in the second half. Six of seven at the line, and this may be his best night at the free throw line this season. Lobos lead it by three. Huge lead by the standards tonight. Here again. A little short again, and there's Shields. He's getting good looks at the ball, Nelson. Well, it's just, you know, the difference between my best driver and your main man. Whistle, hold inside. Now that is his fourth foul. That's on Ruffner, and I'm just going to go ahead and say that's his fourth. <laughs> and it is. It is now official. And he will sit, and Christensen will replace him. Well, that's kind of a good news, bad news for Lobo fans. Good news is they're losing an excellent player, but bad news, he's missed his last few jumpers, and you're going to bring someone else in who may be a little hotter. Look at that off the inbound pass, and caught right dunks it. Similar play in the first half. Thomas missed the dunk. Top right does not. Marty with four points. In nine minutes, BYU has only scored four points. 
but jump into a crowd and let's go to the free throw line. Off the inbounds. Look at the confusion by BYU. Cotwright made sure he didn't miss it. And that is the seventh team foul on New Mexico. It is on Royce Olney, his third. Ooh, good hands by David Gibson. Jump into a crowd, go to the free throw line. You heard it first. Runs it straight now for Randy Reed. Dave Bliss won the WAC championship two seasons ago. Right here, that seems a lot longer ago, doesn't it? Say what, Greg Brown making that three point, three free throws in a row to tie the game up. I mean, those were big. Send it in overtime. We approach 10 and a half minutes to go in regulation. Smith looking for an open man. Now they'll reset. You wonder about fatigue here, Nelson, a little bit. Shot clock down to 10. There's Gibson, one-on-one, -on -one, spinning. And we're going to have a whistle. And exactly what you said, go into a crowd, and you'll pick up a foul. <laughs> go into a crowd and throw it up, and win that. There you see it, the clock's winding down. There you see it. And I think that was a good call, actually. I think Roberts uh, hit. I'm not even sure if they call it on Roberts, but Roberts hit Gibson on the elbow, and Gibson shoots two, short. Fifty-seven percent of the line this season, David Gibson. Second try is good, and that allows Greg Shornstein to come in for Charles Smith. I think that substitution is exactly what you're talking about, Mike, fatigue. I think Spider, you know, he's been running off those picks, playing pretty good defense. We needed to get him a little breather. The last foul was the fourth on Randy Reed. So BYU with Rutgers and Reed. Who the three R's on the bench. Two guys that handle the basketball a lot. Burgess is checked in. Wide hour with the ball now. Nathan Cooper also in there. Boy, a quick foul on Cotwright. And I do believe that's his fourth. Maybe third. Now it's his fourth. Right? Just put it up. Yeah, I haven't got one of those right yet. <laughs> and so Roberts now will shoot the bonus. He's really been active tonight, doing a very good job. Charles Smith was going to go in, and now they decide not yet. It's kind of the wrong game to be active. You know, this is... <laughs> Just don't miss very often. There we go. This is kind of more tag you're in. You know, they're looking for that. The lead is three for New Mexico. At Utah Saturday, a game we'll have here on UPN 50. Roberts with 11. And Dave Bliss in New Mexico call a 20-second timeout. Probably going to set up a special play here. Also, they could kind of see things turning a little bit, uh, having a harder time getting the good shots. Uh, need to run their offense a little better. I think that's what Dave Bliss is talking to him about. In this half, New Mexico has 19 points and BYU 8, and thus the 60-58 Lobo lead. Utah hosting UTEP up the road here tonight. No report on that game yet. BYU has, uh, like several other teams, decided to start their home games at 7 o'clock. Shields off the screen. Here's the play you're talking about. Can't get the roll. Rebels have to hustle back here. All the way back out. Burgess in the lane, swatted away. Two Lobos down there, okay. At the other end, to Olney, who was fouled hard. He couldn't quite get the hoop, but he'll shoot two. That's on Burgess with the foul. Look at Marty. Good position there. 
good position. Clayton gets the block. Luckily, no one got hurt. Shields went hard down hard in the Utah game, whipping his head. Another injury in that Utah game was Kenny Thomas, who had his eye poked. That is okay. Nice looking shot from Aldi, the best free throw shooter for New Mexico at 84%. Mr. No Dribble. Second one also good. Seven points for Royce. Sophomore from TRC, and the Lobo lead is six. Tying their biggest of the night. Or make that four, 62, 14, 58. Four-point edge. Roberts double team. And off New Mexico. You know, double teaming uh, is you got to be worried about that because that's more hands around, and those refs are calling those fouls. 9.05 left in regulation. Tipped out of bounds by Gibson. Shot clock at 15. Campbell's going to come back in the game. Campbell, the first BYU player tonight with four fouls. He's been on the bench quite some time. Played some of his best basketball against New Mexico. His best jumper. He's recruited by Alabama, Auburn, Notre Dame. That'd really be something if he was a football player, but it's still not bad for basketball. Seven on the shot clock. Cooper in the lane. Tipped away, and that will be it for Marty Cott right over the back. Five personal fouls on Marty Cotwright as he tried to keep this one alive. You know, and that was not your typical over the back. I mean, he didn't just reach over the back. Right. The ball was above him, and he got his hand on it. But uh, the refs, one of the things are they're being consistent. Cotwright leaves the game with four fouls. Kenny Thomas comes in the game or with four points and five fouls. Kenny Thomas comes in the game with his four fouls. And now Campbell goes to the line after sitting on the bench a long time and gets the foul. Second shot was good. 62-60, and I think Dave Bliss is uh, I was wondering what Dave is going to do if, if Kenny Thomas fouls out of the game. Who will play the post? Well, I think Daniel Santiago. I, think I forgot about Daniel for a moment. Daniel has is, is, uh, not played here in the second half. But looking to the bench, Thomas inside, has it blocked, but he is fouled. Nice pass there. Kenny goes up strong and uh, quite a bit of ball on that one. But, you know, these refs, they're just not going to give you that. I mean, but there is quite a bit of arm and head there, too. That wasn't close. Well, that was well off. Thomas with nine points in the game. And Mike, it's going to be a free throw shooting contest. Both teams will be shooting two free throws the rest of the game. And a double bonus. Thomas in double figures with 10. Lobo lead is three. Remember, they trailed by nine at the half. Lots of foul trouble for both teams. Two guys with four going at it in the lane. Kenny really lost his balance, and I wasn't sure if he, he wasn't pushed. And BYU will get a fresh shot clock as they get ready to throw it in. Well, one of the things is Campbell, a good offensive player, Lobos need to take it at him, try and get him out of the game, because he can't guard uh, Kenny Thomas. He's a very good offensive rebound. with it. Four Roberts inside, around. Again, shot clock at 17, they have time. Work, get open, Kenny, work, Kenny. That's Cooper. Tip up, Campbell, still loose. Saved nicely by Clayton Shields. Here comes David Gibson now. Mexico, Nelson. The Lobos probably 
both these teams don't mind working a little clock on offense. Back clock down to 12. Clayton Shields has played a very smart game. A lot of floor sets out there. Shot clock at four. Only fadeaway baseline too strong. He had to shoot that over Roberts. That was a tough situation. And he was trying to draw the foul. Spider on the bench, their go-to guy in situations like that, and he's checking in. Less than seven minutes to go in regulation. New Mexico, 16 and three on the season, six and three in the whack. Christensen for the tie. Lobos need to come down. And they need to either get fouled or they need to score because this crowd's getting into the game. BYU is getting confident. Dave Bliss calls for timeout. 6.35 to go. New Mexico 63, BYU 6. The Duke, part of our uh, schedule in the week of February 12th. The action continues with five nights of Chuck Norris. UPN 50's night flight theater, weeknights at 10.30. Mike, that last three-point field goal by BYU, that's only their second field goal they've made this half. They're 2 of 15. It's free throws that have been saving them. Lobo shooting 45% in this game. They are fifth in the nation at just under 50%. Difficult shot by Sheep, by uh, Shorenstein, and now BYU can take the lead. Shorenstein pulled the trigger a little early on that. All the way out, Christensen again. Oh, look at the rebound by Smith. One magazine have, had him rated the best leaper in the whack. I'm starting to wonder if they're not right. Here's Smith. Nice move, boy. He has played exceedingly well tonight. The Lobos lead it by two, and Charles with 20. Good news for Lobo fans. He should be rested again because he spent a few minutes on the bench down the stretch. Roberts now. Roberts with the rebound. Thomas, 11 rebounds. Here's the outlet to Smith, and the dunk. And the Lobo lead is four. Good timeout by Dave Bliss. Kenny Thomas with 11 rebounds, 10 points, his fifth double-double of the season, fourth in the whack. Reed and Ruffner, I expect to see them back in the game pretty quick. There's Roberts, and he'll score there. Again, Kenny Thomas playing with four fouls. Whistle, and a jump ball, they'll say. And the possession arrow goes to BYU. The spider does a good job there. He tries to cut through the defenders. You know, just trying to get some contact. Now, did, that was a jump ball, correct? That's right. Four fouls in the game. Thomas for New Mexico. Ruffner, Reed, Campbell for BYU. Four now on Clayton Shields. Lobos have to box out, Mike. That's what caused that problem. Kenny does a good job. Look how wide he is. Good job. Now, the miss there, and they, they just have better position. Well, he almost, it looked like Whitehour used his left arm, cleared out a little bit against uh, Spider Smith. Now, Whitehour has a chance to tie it. He tossed Mr. Basketball a few years ago. Don't miss very often. He had seven points, four rebounds against the Lobos in the pit. He's actually below his average. We're tied up. I'm surprised Ruffner's not in this game. And he probably is too. Thomas, good position. The dish off. Gets it, lays it in. Assist to Thomas. Three guys were on Kenny Thomas that time. Gibson with nine. Quiet nine points, but a good job 
from the sophomore from Sandia High School. Free throw line, Roberts. Gibson pestering him. You want to get it into Campbell, try to pick up that fourth foul on Thomas. Shot clock at eight. Stripped away, still loose. New Mexico gets it back. Thomas wisely holds up. It's one of those situations, firing it to Thomas there. I mean, well, I think the ball was thrown before he realized exactly who it was. It was on the red jersey. 69-67, New Mexico. Smith, a little fade away, a little strong. Thomas with a huge rebound. The whistle stops play. The officials discuss it. As Ruffner checks back in, and it's on Whitehour, his third, and Thomas will shoot two. This is a very difficult place to play as Charles Smith goes out holding something there, Nelson. I don't know if it was his wrist or his side, but uh, he left in a little pain. He had his his arm holding his side, and I don't know whether which one was, was hurt. Nice looking free throw for Thomas. I wonder if that's the same navy blue jacket that Dave Bliss wore when they won the WAC here a couple years ago. He was wearing one similar. A little superstition tonight. Both free throws are good. Media timeout, 3.20 to go. The Lobos lead at 71-67. New Mexico, Roberts hits him. Didn't take much time to run that play and force, force the Lobos to switch and put Kenny Thomas on Kenneth Roberts. 15 points for Roberts. Two-point Lobo lead. Difficult pass, and a foul, and that will be on wide hour, and Thomas goes back to the line. Schornstein really likes to throw that pass. Excuse me, Nelson. He does. I just get it. Wide hour, I think, is the designated Thomas foul. His job is to get in there. There you see him hit, hit Kenny right on the elbow. Two free throw tosses now. It's almost reminiscent of the Utah game uh, Saturday night where the Utes just kept sending players in at Thomas picking up fouls, 11 personal fouls charged the Utah players playing against Thomas. He gets both to roll down. 14 points for the freshman. 73-69 New Mexico. Oh, look at Shortstein. Reminiscent of two years ago in this game where he had a key steal to help seal it. The Lobos can start working a little clock right now, but for no other reason, you know, a shorter game with Kenny Thomas with four fouls, Clayton Shields four fouls, wouldn't be a bad idea. Charles Smith appears to be okay on the bench. Shot clock at 13. Inside to Thomas, he has position, and he scores. The Lobo lead is six. And Roger Reed calls a timeout with 2.06 to go. 2.06 to go. The Lobos lead 75-69. Don't go away. It's to go. The Lobos lead at 75-69 over the BYU Cougars. Cougars, after the timeout, will play it in. Turnovers now. BYU with 10. New Mexico with 11. Oh, near backcourt. And they will call a backcourt. That's 11th turnover for BYU, and that ties it up. 11-11, New Mexico doing a much better job in the second half. They had seven the first half. BYU had three at the half. Now the officials will discuss it. And the one official uh, looked like somebody was trying to talk him out of the call. Now Lobo's in trouble, need to get it to somebody. Gibson has it. 
across the timeline. Has some room, back out. Shields, dangerous shot, but a big one! Clayton Shields hits his fourth three-pointer of the night. He has 14. That's when you're saying, no, no, work clock. That's a great shot, Clayton. 78-69. Ruffner now. Jump shot, good. BYU can light it up from three-point range, too. Down the sideline to Thomas. Looking for help. Gets out of there. To Olney. And he is fouled. He'll go to the line. Reed is done. Well, he had a chance to finish that one off because the contact looked to be early. Nice pass. Contact was down low there, but you know the refs have been calling that the entire game. They lose some leadership and they lose Reed. Reed will sit down. BYU does have some inexperienced players out there, but guys who can shoot the ball. Christensen and Burgess now in. There you see right there. Good call. Olney hits the first. Royce with eight points. The thing about Royce, even though he's been in a shooting slump, he can help you in a lot of ways. He's one gutsy performer. He really is. 80-71 with 122 and counting left. Mexico needs to play smart now. There's Ruffner. He's double teamed out front. He'll try it. It's in and out. Campbell is there. Ah, and a whistle on Shornstein. Roberts will shoot two, but how about a gutty block by Kenny Thomas with four fouls? <laughs> Big time play by Shaq of the Whack. <laughs> There you see, McKinney waits. He says, I dare you. Get it out of here. They call that foul on Royce Alney there. Number one on Royce. Royce hits the first 16 points, approaching his average of 18 and a half. They're talking about fouling. Coach Reed in front of us are saying, who do we foul? And Burgess is going to be the designated fouler because otherwise, we're going to start losing some bodies. There's only, you want him to have the ball there. Or Thomas, out to Gibson. Whistle, stops clock. New Mexico calls a timeout with 1.02 to go. The Lobo lead is seven. 80-73. How many fouls does Roberts have? Uh, Mike? Well, uh, let's check it out. He has three. Okay, so he's, he's got one foul to give. Uh, Burgess is in the game. He's got some fouls to give, and they can they can lose him. Otherwise, you know, you've got Ruffner and uh, uh, Campbell out there with four. Utah leads the WAC. New Mexico, a win tonight, would lead them in second place with the winner of the Colorado State-Fresno State game, and right now Fresno leads 41-25 late in the half. BYU would be in serious trouble with a loss tonight. They would drop to 5-5 five and five in conference play. But this, uh, we, sh we should say, uh, stating the obvious, it is not over. It's only a seven-point game. The Lobo lead, 80-73 with 102 to go. And one of the things that uh, BYU has, Mike, they can put five guys out there that can shoot the three. I mean, Roberts, he can shoot it. Uh, Campbell, he's not a three-point shooter. But you can, the rest of the guys, they can load them up there. And so if they get hot, they can catch up quick. Timeout situation now. New Mexico with one full. BYU with one full. Each team has used their 20-second timeout. For BYU, one of the things keeping them in this game is their free throw shooting. Mike, they're over 90%, 21 of 23. The Lobos have picked theirs up a bit, too, 25 of 34 at 74%. And that's a bit better than the 69 average on the season. Well, one of the things that's helped them in the second half, Royce, Spider, and Kenny have been the guys shooting them. They'll get it to Olney. No pressure on Olney yet. Now Burgess comes up. That's the guy you want to hold the ball, Olney. Shot clock at 20. They're trying to foul him, I think. And finally, they do. You know, if you're going to foul, I mean, that's just a mistake. I mean, 
uh, Royce was able to waste what 15, 16 seconds. And that off started the clock. at 102, and so it's about 13, but uh, we're down to 49. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna, if you've committed to doing that, then let's go ahead and foul. took a little longer than usual at the line. It's five for five. Shornstein in and Shields out. Little, uh, not offense for defense, but a free throw shooter for uh, Clayton, a little better free throw shooter, and uh, Shorney a little better defensive player on Roberts. So the real reason is Bliss is afraid he's going to crank up another three. 82-73, <laughs> nine point New Mexico lead. Just nearly lost it. Spider Smith on him. Ruffner, that's a three-point try. It's good. Quickly into Olney, trying to get out of trouble to Thomas. Over to Spider Smith, and he is fouled with 31.8 seconds left. 82-76. It's a two-possession game. Spider needs to knock down at least one of these to keep it a uh, to, to move it over into a three-position game. Lobos are flirting with uh, danger over there, throwing it in in that corner, especially when you throw it in, Mike, to a shorter player. Because you put two tall guys on them over there, they can't find the open man. Spider gets the first. His best night at the free throw line. You see the BYU bench. Both free throws by Spider. Those put some pressure on. Looking to trap. Looking for Ruffner. Now it's Roberts in the corner. Short. And nice move by Burgess. They quickly get it into Olney before BYU can call a timeout. And the foul is on Roberts. 84-78 with 16 seconds left. It doesn't seem like that clock is moving fast enough. Well, you know, one of the things you have to remember with the new rule, last minute, right. the, the clock does not continue to run after made buckets. BYU takes its last time out. Dave Bliss talking to Greg Shornstein as he comes in, 84-78. And New Mexico will go back to the line. That will be only, will it not? It will. It will be Royce. They don't get a change the free throw shooter. But, you know, Roberts picked up his fourth foul. Uh, they're going to uh, BYU, you know, even if they were able to turn something around here, they're going to have to foul New Mexico, obviously. They're going to start losing players because uh, Roberts with four, uh, Ruffner with four, Campbell with four. Uh, they're going to lose some This is one of the toughest houses in the whack to win at. They had a 24-game winning streak in the Marriott Center snapped a couple of weeks ago when Colorado State came in here and won. And one of those uh, wins that we, uh, one of those three victories in the last 47 came from the Lobos. Again, two years ago, uh, one of the great games in Lobo history. You had a shot a moment ago of some of the Lobo fans here. Marriott Center is starting to empty a little bit right now. I think it's uh, a little premature for that. We've seen some wild things this year. Well, because of the three-point shot and also because the fact that you can no longer, after a made bucket, just let it bounce there for a while and waste three or four seconds, there's plenty of time left. If Royce makes this one, it's really going to put BYU in a bind. In and out. Now six or seven this is a big free throw here. He needs to turn it into a three-possession game. And he does. And now Dave Bliss will use his last time out. Little cat and mouse with the coaches. That's a good call by Coach Bliss because, uh, I mean, you, you can't save him. You can't move him from game to game. And what does he gain right here? One, he gets to take his team and get them back and get them set up in a defense. He may want to, you know, go to a uh, that trapping zone we've seen. Because one of the things in a trapping zone, the way you break it down is three or four quick passes. If they do that, that's good for the Lobos because it wastes a lot of time. BYU team I mentioned earlier, uh, not that great depth that we've seen in the past. And one reason is uh, Les Jepson from Roswell, New Mexico, uh, went on a mission this year. So somebody that had been in the program a little bit. 
has um, has left for a while. He's uh, on a mission to Tennessee. And, you know, we already mentioned uh, the other coach's son, uh, Robbie. Uh, he left on a mission, but they don't have the, the tall timber that they normally have that they just keep bringing it right. in and in. And, you know, Greg Kite, you know, he's still playing in the NBA, and uh, we graduated from high school the same year and played against him at BYU, uh, one of those guys. And we see Mike Smith uh, doing color on the BYU station, right. a guy that uh, they could come in. He could kind of play all positions. NBA first-round draft pick of the Celtics. And, you know, this would be, I believe, Sean Bradley's senior season if he decided to come back to school. I don't see him coming back. You know? I don't think so. He's not giving the money back. Last three minutes, UNM 12 of 13 at the free throw line. And now they're going full court pressure. Clock has started. 15 seconds to go. Christensen, the corner. Berger has it blocked by Shields. I really like the way Play Clayton played tonight. I think he did a wonderful job. And Kenny, we're worried about fouls the whole time. He's still got one to give. This know? is his seventh consecutive game with four fouls. Christensen pulls up. They'll give him three. I thought his foot was on the line. Seven seconds left. A four-point game. Outlet to Gibson. David will take it in and lay it in. And he is fouled. He is fouled, scores the smile on his face. Well, your foot was yep. on the line, he slid it back. <laughs> I think he did. And here comes Gibson. You know, I like the way the Lobos got it in quick, because that's a situation, throwing it down to the other end, so long as you get your hand on it, that's good enough in that situation, even if BYU stole it. Ball is kicked out of bounds with one and a half seconds left. This is a victory, and to a lot of people, a surprising victory after losing by 18 to Utah. The buzzer sounds, and for the second time in three years, the Lobos have won at the Marriott Center. Our final score tonight, it is New Mexico 88, Brigham Young University 81. The Lobos stay right in the whack race. We'll be back to wrap this thing up after this short timeout. And at New Mexico came back from nine points down to win it by seven. New Mexico takes it 88 to 81 over BYU. And it's time now for our Kelly Lickers play of the game, the biggest and the best, and lots to choose from for the New Mexico Lobos because they played a whale of a final six, seven minutes. Really good defense, one of the things that got them going. Here we're going to see not defense, but offense. Defensive rebound starts it, and the jam by Charles Spider-Smith. Smith led the way for New Mexico with 24 points, and that is our Kelly Lickers, the biggest, the best play of the game. Okay, uh, we, we forget about this game now because we have Utah in two days. Well, yeah, Utah, <laughs> who, who are they? I mean, the way the Lobos played in the second half, they did a good job adjusting to the changes that BYU had made in their offense. BYU shot a blazing 56% the first half, and the second half they shot, you know, probably the in the 30s, uh, no doubt about that, and that's the difference in the game. For New Mexico, Smith with 24, Shields 14, Kenny Thomas with 16, Gibson at only 12 points each. That's 24 points from those two guards. That's outstanding. And, you know, Marty Cartwright came in, and I thought, you know, played a heck of a game uh, defensively, uh, scored some points, but uh, I like the way he had his, uh, his mind ready to go tonight, and, and without him, uh, the Lobos aren't in this game. He did a wonderful job coming off the bench. Well, that's going to wrap it up now from BYU. New Mexico wins it 88-81. The Lobos are now 17-3 on the season. 7-3 in the Western Athletic Conference and sitting in pretty good shape. Really good shape, and this is a young team, and one of the things I keep saying, they're going to keep getting better. Okay. For Nelson France, our producer, director, Kermit Schumard, thank you for being with us tonight. It's New Mexico over the Cougars, 88-81. So long, everyone.